Westminster Priory Church contains a ducking stool. In the past, speaking the truth had very different consequences. As the town's famous resident, Jenny Pipes, knew only too well. Although maybe not in the past, as with the new digital safety laws being enforced the world over. She was the last recorded woman in England to suffer the humiliation and indeed terror of a ducking stool. In 1809 she was accused of being a common scold or so-called nag. Her punishment was barbaric and she was strapped to a wooden stool and ducked and held under dirty water. But Jenny would not be silenced. Each time she was brought out of the water, gasping for air, she loudly cursed the magistrates who had sentenced her and the mayor who had let it happen. Uh, The old Lemster Union Workhouse was built on, on top and incorporates the site of the old priory built in the 16th century. Over the years there have been many sightings of paranormal activity within the old priory complex. It's not unusual for reports of a large black shoggy, shaggy dog called a barghest to be seen wandering the grounds and corridors. Uh, to see the dog is a precursor to death, whether royal or gentry. Other sightings include that of black monks walking in three through one wall and then through another. Uh, visitors to the complex who have been woken from their beds by the sound of chanting in the middle of the night. And yet people in the other rooms haven't heard it. It would seem that the dissolution of the monasteries seemed to increase the possibilities of haunting. Other ghosts ghosts witnessed include a man and a woman lit by the moonlight. Once approached, they raise their hands to the sky and disappear. A Barrington Hall is a country house built in 1778 and now maintained by the National Trust. During the 20th century, it's the seat of the Corley family. The house is reputedly haunted by an indistinguishable figure in the south wing, as well as a phantom unlocking the stable doors. Several uh, spectral steeds have been seen in the stables. Surrounded by 1,500 acres of woodland, farmland and parkland, the Grade 2 listed Croft Castle in Yarpole near Lempster has undergone many changes in its long history. Originating as a castle in the 14th century, Croft Castle was the home of the Croft family for 700 years, during which it's reputedly to have gathered a grisly collection of ghostly residents. Welsh hero Glyndwr wanted to forge an independent Welsh state to include Herefordshire. He led a revolt against the king and was the last native Welshman to be crowned the Prince of Wales. His sister, uh, Morthoth, married into the Croft family, but there's no record of what became of Glyndwr himself. Some say he never died but sleeps in a secret location, waiting for the day when his country needs him again. But bad investments and bankruptcy forced the Croft family to sell the castle in 1746 to a local ironmaster. In 1957, the castle entered into the care of the National Trust. People have mentioned the ghost of a girl called Lily Armstrong, with additional reports of a headless coach driver and a baby that cries in the middle of the night. Wigmore Castle, this area was once ferociously fought over by the English and the Welsh. A blood was spilled nearby the famous Battle of Mortimer's Cross during the War of the Roses. Edward Mortimer, future King of England, was only 18 when he led his troops into battle. On a bitterly cold day in 1461, Edward faced opposing forces led by Jasper Tudor half-brother of Henry VI. Jasper marched from South Wales, joining his father, Owen Tudor. Meanwhile, Wigmore Castle was prepared if things went wrong for, for Edward. On the day, Edward's archers unleashed a fatal arrow upon the er- enemy, inflicting heavy casualties. Soldiers fought as knights rode into battle in full suits of armour. Jasper's army was pushed back to the river, 
fleeing men drowned in the freezing water, and those who made it across were cut down by reserves on the other side. Uh, Jasper escaped on horseback, but his father was less fortunate. Uh, the fortified manor house, Herges Court, dates back from 1267 and was built by Howell ap Meyrick and subsequently occupied by the Clan Vau and Vaughan families. The house, which be, can be seen from the bottom of the lawn below Herges Croft, is said to be haunted by a great black hound, the Black Hound of Herges, which is believed to be the inspiration for Conan Doyle's Hound of the Baskervilles. At Kington, Vaughan's wife, Ethel Gethin, was known as Ellen the he Ellen Gethin was known as Ellen the Terrible. Her brother was murdered by their cousins following an argument and Ellen decided, decided to exact revenge. Dressed in men's clothing, she entered an archery tournament and shot an arrow straight through his heart. Kington Church, to see that uh, there's an alabaster tomb of Ellen and Thomas with a dog curled at their feet. Home Lacey is said to be haunted by a grey lady and the sight of occasional ghostly goings on. Near Bromyard, many of the deaths on the A465 <coughs> road are here blamed on an entity which grabs the steering wheel and prevents people from turning corners. Uh, the ghost is said to be that of a woman who once died while fighting someone as she sat in the driving seat of a fast-moving car. Uh, the Falcon Hotel at Bromyard, the ghost of a young gentleman that walks around the second floor of the building has been heard asking the question, where is Anne? The ruins of Avonbury Church near Bromyard are not currently accessible to the public, but the area is still alive with ghost stories. From a phantom organist causing music to echo around the area near the river, Froome, to, uh, to a sinister bell from the former church tower, the ghost of the now derelict church in Avonbury near Bromyard first made itself known in 1896 and many locals have reported sounds of an organ performance in what was an empty church. The then vicar reported it but on approaching the church doors were found to be locked as expected. The ramshackle building has a graveyard outside where some members of the Baskerville family are buried. Uh, before the church was closed in 1931 when the church was closed for the final time in 1933, the three bells were moved to St Andrew's by the Wardrobe Church in London. It is stated that these bells rang when the last two vicars of Avonbury died, but there were no bell ringers present. Sadly, that all the remains of the church are some broken down walls. In 1849, the Hereford Times reported the case of a woman being accused of stealing a chicken. He, against her involved a key and a Bible. The ancient superstitious belief that a thief could be detected by placing a key on a passage in the Bible. A similar practice I've reported on in Shropshire on my series of vlogs on Charlotte Byrne. Uh, the Bible was tightly closed with string. All that was needed was a list of suspects to be read aloud and the key would rotate as the real thief's name was said. Uh, the accuser of the woman carried this out and the friends according to them it worked. They made arrests and sent for the constable. Surprisingly they thought it could be true and promptly arrested the woman and she appeared before the assize. Uh, the woman was unfortunate to be found with a fully dressed chicken. There were two serious flaws with this case not including the key claim. <coughs> a neighbour had helped the woman pluck the chi chicken more than two days earlier and this chicken was actually a small pullet and the chicken stolen was a cockerel. Storage. In storage, a large black cat was spotted by two witnesses who were unnerved as it moved around a mound 
and then disappeared over the top. George Jarvis School, Staunton on Wye. Many pupils who boarded at the school reported numerous paranormal experiences and sightings. The school, amongst many other buildings and houses, were under the George Jarvis charity. The school offered boarding since the day of opening. This was aimed for the benefit of children who came from a poor family. Uh, the building had, has had the American army stay there and is said to have been a hospital for the army at some point in its history. It was also used as a youth hostel in the 1980s. Uh, George Jarvis, who left this massive fortune to the poor of Staunton on Wye, uh, Bredwardine and Letton in 1793, demanded his legacy never be used to erect public buildings. In his will, George Jarvis stated, My mind and will is none of the said monies be appropriated in erecting any public buildings whatsoever. Former pupils and the staff have shared from their spooky experiences, uh, from things moving on their own accord in the classroom, to ghostly legs being seen in the corridor. Uh, the locals often speak about a ghostly man looking out from the top window, which they believe to be the unsettled and angry spirit of George Jarvis, who is believed to haunt the school. After all, his money used to, was to use to erect this public building, which went, again, went right against everything in his will. The new inn, Pembridge, dates back to 1311 as a farmhouse. A War of the Roses treaty was allegedly signed here in 1461. It's reported to be haunted by two ghosts. One is a woman pining for a lover to return, and one is a soldier. In the quiet and remote country, country village of Weebly stands an old church, St Peter's and St Paul's. Uh, this Norman church holds an unnerving legend that is the legend of Old Nick. The church goes back many years and is built of red stone. Unfortunately, all that remains today to show that it was a Norman church is the reset down south doorway in Chevrons. Uh, the chancel and aisles of the late 13th century the chancel opens to the nave by a high arch springing from brackets to the south aisle and a 13th century coffin lid with a floretted cross that is in memory of you Bishop of Norton Cannon. Uh, many changes and improvements were made to the church in the middle of the 1300s. Um, the lofty northwest tower with a spire connected to the corner of the pinnacles by flying buttresses, was built and the chancel was lengthened in the 14th century. The north aisle was also widened in the 15th century. Inside, it's assumed that the knight on the chest is William Devereux, 1430. There is, however, an imposing statue of Colonel John Birch, 1694. It's believed by many that anybody that says the Lord's Prayer backwards whilst walking around a large cross in the churchyard, uh, they will call upon the devil. Uh, the Red Lion in Weebly has a resident ghost at this 15th century inn, has even been given the name George. A Weebly Marsh, the Dunmore Farm, a man was poisoned by giving a roasted toad for his dinner. It's unclear whether his ghost is still active. At the village of Dillon, uh, there once stood a, an old home named Home House. Uh, one of the servants died in the downstairs areas early in the 19th century. Uh, the death was officially put down to being due to a sudden seizure. Uh, the rumours and gossip abounded that foul play had been involved. Soon after the death, a servant was in the hallway. He went through and heard a coach and horses drawn up the gravel drive in front of the house. Thinking that some visitor was calling, a servant opened the door, but the driveway was empty. A few days later, another servant had the same experience. This time she was even certain she heard a coach whip crack as the vehicle came to a halt. But again, there was nothing outside the door. 
Wormsley Grange, two ghosts are said to haunt this building. A woman dressed in silk and a man in black. <laughs>